right, I'm here with uh, Will Chobra, the uh, new <laughs> panel host. Uh, well, first, give us a, a bit of an introduction. I know um, a lot of Dota fans aren't familiar with you, but um, you know, here's your chance to say hello. Well, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, as you mentioned, my ID is Chobra. My name is Will. Uh, I've been in esports for, I guess, three years now, um, doing a bunch of games. Right before uh, working with ESL, I was in Korea uh, with On Game Net doing just a multitude of things StarCraft II, uh, League of Legends, Hearthstone, Crossfire, all sorts of different games. Uh, and now I'm here. Uh, I'm working with ESL. I'm a full time employee now of ESL as a host and creative producer. So I hope to see you guys more often. So uh, you're going to be moving to LA? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Number one thing being weather. Absolutely excited to have more sunlight in my life. And also, uh, living in Korea for three years, uh, it was nice, uh, you know, just being able to go back and getting used to it. But after a while, I realized I just felt much more comfortable in the States. So good to be back. And you, uh, you went to school at Columbia. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. how old are you now? I am now 26. And uh, you had an interesting, you know, career path. You didn't really intend to be in esports, but here you are, same as me. So uh, what, t tell us about that. Uh, so yeah, I, I was in Colombia my senior year. I had one semester left uh, studying political science at the time. And the more I studied it, the more I realized I didn't really want to do anything with it after school. Uh, so uh, I was also just dealing with a, a, some other you know, personal problems and whatnot with a family, etc. So I said, I want to take a break, figure out what I want to do in my life. And that's actually when, so some people know, uh, I actually spent about, what, maybe three to six months playing only Dota, because I, I got introduced to Dota 2 about a year before that. And after I took a break, I was like, I'm just going to do whatever I want. So I just played Dota 2 and watched NBA. That's what I did for like two that months. sounds like my ideal life, man. <laughs> no, seriously. That's, that sounds like my ideal life. So for two months, that's all I did. And uh, during that, I decided, well, I've always been interested in broadcasting, actually, whether it's news or just talk shows. And then esports was growing again uh, in the States at the time uh, across multiple games. And I said, why not give it a shot? Uh, I have some time to fiddle with it. And my original plan was, if I can make a steady living out of it, so a salary out of esports within two years, because that's the maximum time I had to take leave from Columbia, uh, then I would stick with it. If not, it was just a fun experience and I would go back and uh, continue to pursue a master's in most likely computer science uh, for pretty much a guaranteed job. So <laughs> uh, that was my plan, but things worked out. I got to go to OGN very quickly, about half a year after I started doing online tournaments, casting and translating. So once I went to OGN, uh, things just kept rolling positively for me from there. So I was very fortunate. And now I'm here at ESL. And now, uh, you know, that's, that's a meteoric rise. <laughs> you were a translator yeah. and now you're the, the host. How, how did you make it happen? You know, all these people want to, they want some advice. Uh, so I, I think the biggest thing for me is I always knew exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, the biggest thing being I've done a lot of work on stage before, whether it's uh, I've done skits, plays, I used to play violin a lot. I used to actually have a dream of becoming a violinist. So I'm very used to the stage and I knew that uh, ever since maybe around middle school that I wanted to be a speaker of sorts, that I, that's how I wanted to communicate with people. and. and Ever, uh, coming into esports, I should say that production side of things, of course, now as a creative producer, I'm very interested in that and I have a lot of opinions, but I knew my main position always wanted to be on stage speaking to people so that I could share my emotions through that uh, than some other means of maybe production or design. So what's the, uh, what, what's the, what's the long-term Will Choba plan then? 10 years, <laughs> what, what are you doing? Uh, 10 years. Give me the dream. <laughs> so then we can look back on, because if you're wrong on this, no one's going to remember. But if you're right, they're going to be like, well, Chobra called it in that interview with Hoppin. So there, there you go. Uh, 10 years. The dream would be, I guess 10 years, I'm 36. I, I would like to maybe still be doing some hosting uh, for esports events. But by then, I, I think my dream, I think 10 years is enough time to say that I really helped transform how esports is presented. Uh, the production, whether it's the stage work or any part of it, that my mark is there. That oh, this happened. Like now, this is the norm mm. in esports uh, tournaments because of Chobra. That's that's what I want to happen. Okay, in 10 years. all right, that's pretty good. And 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 uh, your uh, your dream job, my, my dream job. <laughs> yeah, your dream job in esports or with, outside of esports. What is it? Uh, I think for now, I'm really happy with where I am because okay. I get to do both stage work and pre-production. So, so living the dream. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, okay, so you know you're uh, you're on a panel with all these guys that are very knowledgeable about Dota. Do you feel um, you know intimidated a little bit, or are you like comfortable? Because I, I know you uh, you you played Dota, but you haven't been doing you know the professional stuff probably for a while. So what 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 do you th feel about that? 
Yeah, I I was a I was a little bit anxious coming in just because I haven't been able to closely follow the professional scene like you said for quite some time now. But I I mean these guys are super easy to work with, and once we got to just know each other on a personal level, I, talking to them, I was actually just really amused and really interested in what they had to say because I've always liked Dota. So just hearing their knowledge, I was like, oh, all right, now now I feel like I actually just got a crash course on joining back into the Dota community, and I feel really comfortable. How how, how much research did you do? Uh, so I obviously watched all the seeding bracket matches. I was watching uh, the summit and a couple of the other highlights from uh, the recent other tournaments. And then you know I was just briefing myself on all the biographies of all the players and all the team switches that have happened since like three years back, just so I know where they're coming from. And, and that's usually what I do when I jump into a new game. I just go give myself like a two week crash course on learn all the players, their names, their histories. And that way, when something comes up, I know how to react. How, uh, how familiar are you with the actual heroes and mechanics and spells and stuff? Uh, so all, all like the basic mechanics that are very unique to Dota, very familiar with that, and uh, familiar with most of the heroes. I don't remember all the skill names, but you know I know what they do. I know what they look like, so I know how to watch. Okay, I got a quiz for you. No, I'm just kidding. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh shoot, you got me. <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna do that to you here. Um, but uh, okay, tell us, tell us about, tell us about Chobra off camera. What, what do you? Yeah, you just, you said you're an NBA fan. I don't want to get into that because we could, we can talk forever about that. But other than that. Uh, Otherwise, um, I, I still really like music because uh, I used to play violin and I used to produce some music in college too. So, uh, you know, I like to listen. I like to dabble in some production, although I don't have much time for that. I mean, these days I, I'm, I'm just super busy, so I don't really know. My off time is technically sleeping. And then otherwise, I'm in the office either preparing for a show or reviewing other shows here at ESL. So that takes up all my life now. And uh, how did you, so you, you, you built up the experience being on camera and that's why you're so comfortable at it. What do you think, uh, what advice would you give to someone that's looking to become like a panel host or uh, be on camera always? Uh, I think the biggest thing that people often overlook is that yeah, sure, the live experience helps, but it's two things. It's how you practice at home on your own. So you have to feel comfortable just blabbering about to the mirror or even if you're just working on the computer, reading out what you're doing all the time so you hear yourself and that way, even if you don't catch it, if someone gives feedback, like, hey, you use this word a lot. For instance, I used to say brilliant as my like go-to adjective for positive. I would be, oh, that's a Harry Potter? <laughs> yeah. you like so, a lot or what? No, I would just say, oh, that's a brilliant play. Oh, that was a brilliant pick. And after a while, people picked up on it. They were like, if you say it too much, you know, it kind of gets diluted. It's not brilliant anymore. I said, oh, yeah, good point. Uh, so you need to be used to hearing yourself talk all the time. And then the second is, once you have that live experience, going back and monitoring it. I don't think... I can't stress this enough. I don't think enough people spend the full time to go back. It is a hassle, right? You have like a 12 hour show, you can't go through all of it, but go back, you know, skip through and say, oh, I remember this part. Oh yeah, I wanted to fix that. And that way you can take notes and fix upon it on future shows. Do you, uh, do you feel like you have the newscaster cadence? You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> uh, some people have commented that sometimes I do. Uh, I think uh, I, I think it's not as consistent, but I, that's something I've been striving for uh, to be. That's where I start, right? That can be my foundation. And then depending on the style of the show, I can go off from that. Do you, do you think it's good? Uh, you, you mean like where I am or that no, being like, uh, sports? Yeah, like do you think that that, because they all speak very similarly, you know, yeah. like every, every news anchor. So do you think that that, there's a reason for that and, and why, why that is? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think there's a clear reason for that. One of it just being that it's, if you have that basis, that way, whether you get dramatic or silly, it's very clear, right? You have that very neutral tone uh, that's very clear for one. The enunciation is the biggest thing, and that, that way everyone can understand you. And that way, if you want to get dramatic, or if there's a big story coming up, the grand finals, you can really hype it up, and then everyone feels that same change in tone. And then if you want to get silly, joke around, maybe you're just having a little bit of a fun on the expert desk, you're not a caster, then you can also change that up. It, it's much more impactful, I think, when you go the other directions from there. And uh, so, so you're very professional on camera, but we're we're kind of little we're goofballs, you know, outside of camera. So tell us about that, Will Chobra. Uh, I yeah, I guess most people don't assume that I would be like. But I'm very sarcastic for one. That's that's kind of my go-to. If I the more I get to know you, the more sarcastic I get. As, as a lot of people we're, are, these we're gonna days. get along, Will Chobra. Yeah, we're gonna get along. <laughs> yeah. So so I, I love just kind of twisting people's words and getting back at them when I'm having fun. Uh, and. You know, all the like esports memes and whatnot, like we joke around about that all the yeah. time backstage. So I I'm all for that, you know. Uh, one thing though that I know 
I'm not on par with most people is that I'm very behind on pop culture. I was just okay. maybe I'm just too lazy. So when those jokes happen, I'm just like I'm just ignorant about. You, got, you should read the Wikipedia uh, summaries for movies. That's what I do. You don't have to watch any of them. You, all the shows and movies, just read them. There you. Now I know. And now I know. Can, the yeah. Then you can act like you really know it. Fantastic. Yeah. Now that will be even better. You usually know more than the people that actually watch it because the Wikipedia is very good at summarizing that stuff. <laughs> All right. All right. Now That's I can be a tip. pro. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Okay, just read all of them. Uh, all right. Well, you know, thanks take, for taking the time. You know, uh, good luck. Um, you know, I'm sure Valve will just hire you for the international next after watching this, right? Uh, that, that'd be great. I've never been to TI. I, and I always just hear amazing stories about being yeah. at TI. So whether even if I don't work there, I would just love to visit. Right. But yeah, if I get to work there, that'd be pretty cool. Just saying. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that, that would be a story, wouldn't it? Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I've always think that, like you said, I've been very fortunate in my path in esports so far, starting out as kind of a freelance it's like journalist. like luck and hard work combined. Yeah, yeah, definitely luck there. Uh, of course, I put in my hard work too, but I mean, if I get to go to the TI too, I mean, I've done world championships for other games, so why why not? Why not round it out with Dota too, right? Okay, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, oh, yeah, we have to do this segment at the end. Shout outs. Give me some shout outs uh, and, and call outs. Yeah, well, I mean, I've always I've always given a lot of thanks to, you know, all the people that have supported me. Of course, I always give a lot of thanks to Monty back at OGN in Korea cuz he's Monte Cristo. Yeah, Monte yeah. Cristo. Yeah, Cristo. yeah, cuz he've he's given me a lot of tips. He's helped me out a lot in just my improvement. So, huge shout out to him. Of course, Doha out in OGN too. We had great times for 3 years out there and uh, now for all the fans, especially in the Dota community, you guys have been so supportive on my first day here at ESL One, and I just feel really welcomed, and I'm really excited to be here. So that that makes me even more excited to hopefully do future Dota Two events. And you can find me on Twitter, Will Chobra. Uh, actually, Will Chobra across the board, whether it's Twitch, Twitter, what other social media you might use. And yeah, hope hope I can talk to you guys more often. And uh, give me a call out. A call out? Yeah. You know what call out is, right? Like what? What do you mean by a call out? Like, you, like you're calling someone out. Calling, like a calling someone the out? The opposite of a shout out. <laughs> I want you to trash talk I, someone. Well, you know, don't, so I spent, Don't give me a neutral answer, Will. Come no, on. I, I mean, I, 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 so those of you guys who don't know, I spent a lot of time with Blitz. Okay. Uh, <laughs> back in Korea when he was playing there. And I just want to say, Blitz, you, you got you to gotta just be a nicer guy. Okay. Just <laughs> <what I> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. So no, we I, have, I we have the Blitz, nicer though. Will. Yeah, yeah, there we go. We actually we actually have the same exact name, uh, even last name. His name's Chobra also. <laughs> His name's Chobra too, if you guys didn't know. Bliss is just a surname, but it's Chobra really right there. Okay, all right. Thank you very much for the interview, and, uh, you know, I'll see you out there.